Hey fellow tennis nerds and welcome to this video about comfortable rackets, racket that offer players good comfort, usually a low flex rating, less chance of vibrations and developing tennis elbow and uh, let's go through that. First of all I want to thank Skillshare, it's a sponsor of this video, it's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. Uh, there's also tennis classes there and I've been looking at uh, Jan Matelka's tennis class, a very good class about unlocking pros biomechanics for the forehand. So I've really been struggling with my forehand over the years, um, but it's been improving a lot. Thanks a lot to YouTube and, and watching classes on Skillshare like this. Jan does a really good job at explaining the key uh, features of the modern forehand and how to get the pros biomechanics into your kind of club level player uh, system. So it, it really helped me a lot to improve my forehand. He also actually has uh, a lot of good ideas on how to uh, work on your body so it's it's stronger and it will help the forehand uh, everything from side leg squats to um, to working on your ab abdominals and stuff like that so very nice course uh, there are a bunch of other tennis courses as well with Jan and, and other people but uh, this turn your forehand into a weapon was the one I've been enjoying the most check out Skillshare no ads always launching new premium classes less than ten dollars a month with an annual subscription the first of my thousand subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium Skillshare membership that you can check that out in the description below now let's talk about comfortable rackets Many players today suffer from arm issues like tennis elbow, sore wrists or shoulder pain. It's important to point out that the racket is only one factor that might contribute to arm issues. There are many things you need to consider to figure out why your arm is hurting. Uh, you should definitely go to a physio or an osteopath if you have serious issues. Make sure to strengthen your body, get proper treatment. I always recommend the flex bar. A very good tool to strengthen your forearm and the muscles around your elbow. I will put a link in the description as usual. It's a tool I use daily and it's helped me. Uh, I've suffered from tennis elbow and wrist pain over the years at times. But uh, generally I always get back to scratch. So I'm, I'm pretty healthy right now. Um, so there are several factors that contribute to a tennis elbow, forearm pain or wrist pain. Number one, miss hits, hitting outside the sweet spot, that's always an issue. You want to have a racket that helps you hit in the sweet spot as much as possible. This doesn't mean that it should be have a huge uh, racket face. It really depends on your swing, on what feels natural to you and where you contact the ball. I hit the ball better with 95 screen rackets in general because that's what I grew up with. So uh, don't think that you need an oversized racket to make sure you always hit uh, inside the sweet spot. Usually they do have bigger sweet spots, so it might help. Two, hitting the ball late or too close to the body, you will have an unnatural stance and your the vibrations will more easily go up to your elbow. You need to use your kinetic chain, that's very important and that will also prevent arm pain. Uh, many players are gripping the racket too tightly and uh, they're arming the ball. Uh, I've been uh, doing that at times myself. Uh, it's getting better, but it's taking a lot of work. If you're self-taught uh, like I am, it's, um, it takes a lot of work to get the technique somewhat right. And uh, people still have <laughs> things to complain about. But uh, it's important to have a relaxed movement. Don't grip the racket too tightly and make sure you flow with the tennis ball. Number four, and this is what we're getting to here soon, the, the racket is too stiff. Stiffness is measured in RA units, uh, usually ranging from around low 50s to uh, mid 70s uh, usually. And uh, anything that's, that's above 65 is strong, is pretty stiff. When you string a racket, uh, the Stiffness drops a few points, around three points usually. So if you see unstrung specs at 68, means that the strung specs will be 65. This is not the whole story about whether a racket is harsh or not, but it's an, uh, an important indicator. There might be dampening materials. The weight uh, always helps. So if you have a heavier racket, that's usually more uh, healthy for the arm, but then it might force you to mistime the ball. So uh, there are a lot of factors that come into play. Strings are too stiff, so you can check string stiffness at the Tennis Warehouse University. That's a very good tool they have. Uh, the string stiffness is important. If you have a very stiff string like 4G at a high tension, 
you're usually in for trouble unless you're Stefano Tsitsipas that generally hits the ball in the middle of the string bed and well in front. Be cautious with using stiff strings uh, if you're not a pro player. If you're using stiff strings, make sure uh, to go down in string tension. Don't string above 55 pounds or uh, try to even string below 50 pounds. That's the best if you can go as low as possible. We'll open up the sweet spot, we'll open up more spin, uh, we'll make the racket feel better, but you will uh, risk a little bit of control. There will be uh, some trade-off, of course, in the control factors, but not as much as you think. So beware of high string tensions. So consider all these factors, strengthen yourself, record yourself so you can watch yourself hit, see if you can pick up any issues in your technique or footwork. If you can't go to a coach, there are video coaching services like improves.co that I've reviewed on this channel. And there are plenty of videos online such as Top Court. Uh, there's a link to try it for free in the description. Top level tennis and of course a bunch of YouTube videos. So there are ways to improve your tennis and uh, I would really recommend putting in some effort because you will really enjoy tennis a lot more. What makes a racket comfortable? Low stiffness, as I said. We're gonna look at low 60 strung or below 60 strung. So we wanna make sure that we don't go above uh, a threshold of around 63 strung. That's my aim with this video. Luckily, there are some rackets still uh, below these figures in RA, uh, but most today are pretty stiff because you get free power, uh, seemingly easier to use. Not always the best to use a very light and stiff racket for your technique because you can end up getting a bit lazy with the footwork. I find that I, I play better tennis when I force myself to move more if I'm using a more control-oriented frame. We're not all the same, and sometimes you need a bit more help from the racket, but beware of the racket inducing you into a, a more lazy approach and not moving your feet. Number two, dampening tech. I like the Prokenix Kinetic System, an excellent example that really works. It has a bit of a... a distinct feel and uh, sound, but it's a very good system for comfort. One of the key issues with comfort rackets is that some of that connected feel that a lot of you like, and my, I'm myself, I'm no different, that direct feedback can get lost in the dampening or the really strong flex profile. So there are always trade-offs when you're looking for rackets. Some people will love a, a strong flex or a very dampened feel. Some people might not. So uh, you have to consider the trade-offs. Same goes with some people love the feeling of a stiff poly, but it might hurt their arm. Then you will have to find some other way to approach it. And uh, maybe you go for a comfortable racket and a stiff poly, or you go for a, a stiff racket with a soft string like a multifilament. So there are ways around it if you like a certain feel. First of all, we look at Wilson. Wilson Clash is the obvious one. I've talked about the Clash a lot. It's a line that has taken the tennis world by storm. Thick beam, spin-friendly string bed, but still an ultra-flexible response, kind of harking back to the days of very, very buttery rackets. So despite the low stiffness ratings, this uh, line of rackets is pretty stable, packs a punch from the back of the court, so it's truly innovative in that sense. The bigger head size, the more weight you have in this line, the more power you get, so the Clash 108 would probably be the most powerful of the Clash rackets. If you want a light racket, need help generating power and so on, but that's more of a beginner racket. Uh, the Clash 100, Clash 100 Tour are the, the most popular rackets in the Clash lineup. You can also go for the Clash 98 if you want more control. I've made videos about all these frames on this channel. Downsides of the Clash is that there's a disconnected feel at times and there are some inconsistencies in the string bed that I've talked about in my reviews. The pros are pretty huge. They're comfort, free depth, and spin. If you do enjoy the feel, I think the Clash line is excellent. Uh, there's not such a huge trade-off in the control factor, in the inconsistency factor. But if you don't like the feel, it's not a racket for you. I think the feel of a racket is very important. I just want to say that again. I think playing tennis, you, you, it's all about having fun for most players. And I really think that enjoying it with your racket, the feeling of your racket is very important. That's, I think, is the true essence of a tennis nerd. Other rackets from Wilson that are comfortable is the Wilson Blade 104, where they drop the stiffness down to 60. It's a big step down from the high 60s it was before that racket. Or the Blade 98, uh, which is a more advanced racket in many ways. 
but it's uh, not stiff either anymore thanks to the flex tech they have there and the, the lower stiffness rating. So uh, there are some blades, but the clash line is the Wilson Comfort uh, line, I would say. Pro Kenex Kinetics, I, it's the leading brand in arm friendly tech. Can't really go wrong with any of the racket in terms of comfort. If you're really sensitive and want something similar to the Clash with less power, you should look into the KI Black Ace rackets, the new ones. They offer a really low flex rating, 55, and but with a thinner beam compared to the Clash. So they might be a bit less stable. I have not tested these frames. I hope to do so at some point. They do intrigue me, but I think there, there will be a love and hate with these frames considering that they are so low in stiffness. So for a racket similar to the Pure Drive, I would rather recommend the Prokenex KI5 300. It offers uh, high stiffness, but thanks to the kinetic tech, it's still arm friendly. So uh, that racket is more similar to other modern frames. If you want more control in a comfort frame, I would go for the KI Q Plus Tour Pro rackets. There's one 315 grams that I've reviewed, has an open pattern, and there's one 325 grams, 1820, that Andrea Seppi endorses. From Prince, the Phantom line is the most arm friendly. They're generally pretty good at arm friendly rackets, Prince. They do have their tech called O ports, which increases string movement, reduces vibrations. For max power with O ports, you go for the ripstick rackets that I've reviewed on the channel. But although they're more comfortable than most rackets in that thick beam power category, I still wouldn't call them comfort rackets. Instead, the Prince Phantom line is one that stands out here. Stiffness ratings around 60 or below. Top spinners should look at the Phantom 100X305. Flat oriented players should consider the Phantom 100X1820. For more control, you go to the Prince, and Prince Phantom P line. The best option there. The 100P is the most forgiving one, a little bit more spin friendly, while the 97P and the 93P are more for finesse oriented, flat hitting players. They're all good. Prince rackets are overall very, very high quality. The Prince Phantom is the most comfort oriented of the bunch. Head offers a few different comfortable options. The Gravity line is the one that stands out the most with consistently low stiffness ratings. You can go for the Gravity Pro if you're an advanced player looking for control, while the Tor and the MP are lighter, a bit more powerful, and the Gravity S will give you the most power and spin and ease of use. I think the Gravity S is an overlooked racket for mo many players, for in beginner to intermediate, the Gravity S is an excellent choice. Uh, nice comfort, good power and spin. For control players, the Prestige MP, one of my favorite rackets, is very soft, comfortable, great for the arm, but doesn't give you a lot of power. For more powerful rackets, I wouldn't say that the speed rackets are stiff or harsh either, but I wouldn't be able to put them in a comfort category when they're more in the mid-60s stiffness rating. Dunlop mainly offers control-oriented comfort rackets like the Dunlop CX line. You have a bunch of different rackets around the low 60s stiffness rating to choose from there. Six, uh, CX 200 Tour, CX 200, CX Oversize, all in the low 60s strong. Very nice frames. Big fan of the CX line from Dunlop. Yonex main comfort frame is the V Corp Pro 97HD, which is below 60 RA strong, but that's more for advanced players with a heavier weight 1820 pattern. Otherwise, most of Yonex frames are in the mid 60s stiffness. Uh, I would like them to create a line that's a little bit more comfort focused. And uh, it's the same wish goes to Babola uh, that are not mentioned here because they have also not really gone below the 60 mid 60s in stiffness with their frames. So those two brands are, are you know, producing stiffer, a bit more powerful, a bit more modern frames. And I would love to see them go a little bit back in time and try to create a more comfort oriented frame or try to innovate more like Wilson did with the Clash. For beginners to intermediate player, you have the Lacoste LT 2.0, which is engineered by Technifiber. It has some good dampening technology in the handle to mute harsh vibrations. I've reviewed it on my channel and the website before, and I, this was a pretty fun frame, but you need to add some weight to this one if you're a somewhat advanced player. Otherwise, for beginners, it's, it's fine. Volkel, I mentioned these two before, PowerBridge Mid C10 Pro. They are comfort rackets for advanced players. Uh, Seaton Pro is beefier, more powerful. The PowerBridge Mid is more of a scalpel. 
Otherwise, they've gone in the stiffer direction with vocal frames. A little bit sad about that because they used to create a lot of nice, comfortable frames with really good touch. Now it's a little bit more towards Babula Yonex style with mid 60 or high 60 stiffness ratings. And gel, I've talked about before, their K7 line, very comfortable frames. K K7 lime for max control, K7 red for a bit more spin, and the K7 cyan for more forgiveness and power. All nice, somewhat muted, but they do offer excellent dampening. These are all loads of different comfort options for you to consider if you have a sensitive arm or just want to take extra precautions not to get any issues in the future. Uh, which one is your favorite? Really keen to hear that. I use the Prestige MP most of the time, do like the K7 line, but many of these frames like the CX or the V-Core Pro, uh, they're all very good for advanced players. For you who need a bit more help with pace and spin, I would look into the Clash or the Pro Kenex line because I think those are very good. I also like the Gravity and for um, a little bit lower level players, the Gravity S is excellent. So look into that one as well. That's all. Pretty long video today. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, put them below. And if you need help finding a racket, check out the Tennis Nerd consultation service on tennisnerd.net. Also, please consider becoming a patron. Support Tennis Nerd. Get more content, more nerdy stuff there. It's kind of Tennis Nerd University. So please check that out. And uh, that's all. Have a nice day. Don't forget to play some tennis.